All right, we're back. So as you can tell right now, the weather is just perfect. I mean, no wind. We're in the bay today, so usually there's not much swell in the bay. It's pretty protected, but um, wind is often a big deterrent from fishing out here. And right now there's absolutely no wind. It's as good as it gets. 8.30 a.m. I think the wind's probably gonna pick up around noon today, maybe one o'clock. We're lucky. Um, but we're gonna try to get out here and get some halibut. So as you can tell from the title of this video, I wanna start a new little series on my channel, which is using big monster baits, like baits you probably wouldn't even think to use. And it could be any species, any baits, artificial, live, frozen, whatever it is. I just wanna use something big to hopefully catch some big fish. And we all know that, um, well, actually it's a big debate. You know, do you do big fish, like do you increase your chances of catching a big fish by using a big bait? Well, hopefully we find out over the series. But anyways, today we're out on the bay, trying to target some halibut, and we're gonna be using some frozen herring, which if you watch my last halibut video, we killed it with the frozen herring. We got a limit, it took us a little while, but we did get a limit eventually. Um, so today I'm hopefully gonna target some bigger fish using some monster. I, I found the biggest herring I could find in my freezer um, and brought that out today. So we're gonna be using that a little bit later. First off, we're gonna start with a more normal size frozen herring and try to catch a few fish first, maybe get a keeper or two under our belt and then we'll switch it up because I think when we start using the bigger baits, we're gonna start eliminating more bites, but hopefully the, the bites that we do get are gonna be big fish. So anyways, like I said, we'll drop this down. We're already out here to the fishing ground. So let's get this down, down where the halibut will be hiding. And I'm using my three-way setup that I always use in the bay. If you guys wanna see a more detailed breakdown of this setup, I did a video on my Patreon. I'll leave a link to the Patreon in the description. So a lot of things going into it. Water temperature, water clarity, tide. Oh, oh, oh. Got one already. Okay, well, wasn't expecting to get one on the drop like that, but we did. And before I bring this in, let's have a quick word from our sponsor for today's video, which is Factor. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Now, if you've never heard of Factor before, well, you've probably seen me do a few sponsor videos for HelloFresh. Well, Factor is actually owned by HelloFresh and Factor has a very similar product. What differentiates Factor from HelloFresh is they deliver fresh, ready-to-go meals straight to your doorstep. So if you're like me and you come home from a long fishing trip, the last thing you wanna do is head to the grocery store, figure out all the ingredients you need, and then come home and have to cook that meal. Factor takes away all that hassle. All, everything you get from Factor is fresh, ready to go, pop it in the microwave, and you're ready to eat. And the meal plans from Factor are very flexible. They range anywhere from 4 to 18 meals per week depending on your needs and you can easily skip a week if you need to. And they have several different categories you can choose from. They have keto meals, calorie smart, chef's choice, vegan, and veggie options. So if you're like Olaf and you want to see what else Factor has to offer, head to go.factor75.com slash diehardfishing120 and use the code diehardfishing120 to get $120 off. Again, head to go.factor75.com slash diretfishing120 and use the code diretfishing120 to get $120 off your first order. Thank you again to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's see what we have on the end of the line. Quick first bite there, and it's not the size that we're looking for, but it is a fish right away in the first little minute of dropping it down. See, when we use the bigger herring, I'm telling you, the herring I got today are big. We we'll use the bigger herring. I don't think we're gonna be catching fish like this. But anyways, first fish, we'll let him go real quick. I was getting back down there. That was quick. Yeah. 
All right, fish number two. Striper. Striper. I think this is my first striper of the year. Hold on. So these guys are super squirmy. You gotta watch out for hooking yourself with one of these guys. All right. First, pretty sure this guy's blind in this eye. I think he's, yeah, his eyes look a little weird. I'm pretty sure that eye is blind. So the one-eyed striper, first fish of the, or first striper of the season, he might be 18 inches, which is the minimum size, but we're looking for halibut today. So I think I'll just let this guy go. All right. Thanks for the fight, bro. All right, still looking for that Halley keeper. That one's a halibut. That was pretty quick. That was only, I don't know, maybe a minute or two after that striper. Another halibut. This one's another shaker, though. Target species, but not the target size, unfortunately. Oh, oh, oh hold on. Give him a quick release. He's obviously excited. All right, still looking. I'm feeling too heavy. Yep. Well, it's a numbers game. We try to weed through enough shakers to hopefully find a keeper. All right, shaker number four, I think. So close. I think it's a keeper, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'm just gonna flip him in here. Get a quick measurement on him. So I don't want to net this fish because the net would mess this guy up. So in order to keep this fish nice and healthy. Flip them in like that. Give him a quick measurement. No, he's a little short. Man, he's right there. He's probably like 21 and three quarters, but a little bit short, so I think I'm gonna put him back. All right, looks out. It's probably as close as you're gonna get to keeper. Might be right at 22, but I'm gonna let him go. Yep, probably about as close as you're gonna get. Oh. All right, well, little update. It's about 12.30 now, so we just passed the low tide, so it's tide just turned and it's gonna start coming in now. Um, typically speaking, when you're fishing for halibut, most people like to target the slack tide, uh, which is basically either the top of the tide or the bottom of the tide. It's when there's not too much water movement. So um, hoping that this little slack tide here will bring some bigger bites. I mean, we've had quite a bit of action. I think I've landed five shakers plus another shaker striper. 
Um, so there's plenty of fish out here, but I'm still looking for that keeper. The last one was actually uh, maybe a keeper, probably right around 22 inches, um, but I decided to let it go. Didn't want to take a chance with it. Yeah, it looks like this boat next to me is actually hooked up as we speak. So hopefully, fish are coming in. Seems like the bite might be starting to pick up again. There was a little bit of a lull there where we weren't getting much. Um, plane going overhead. Hopefully there's some fish swimming down below. All right, well, it's definitely slowing up here. I haven't got a bite since the last fish, which was probably about maybe two or three hours ago. So um, definitely slowed up with this change in tide, but I probably could promise I'm gonna use some big baits. So that's the biggest herring that I could find in my freezer right there. And I put some bigger hooks on, cut up some bigger line, just in case we hook that monster, we should be ready for him. And uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna troll this all the way back until we're done, we're done for the day. And hopefully we get some action on this big guy. All right, I know it's getting a little bit windy out here, but hopefully we can get lucky on our way back in here. This is when I got all my fish last time I came out. So hopefully I can replicate that somehow. And Find me a little pot of nice helm in here. Alright, we're back out here. So I feel like last time I cheated you guys. I didn't use the big herring enough. So I want to just come back out here and give it a fair shot before I conclude this video. So today, I'm just going to start off with the big herring. No more messing around with any small stuff. We're going to go big or go home and we'll see what happens. Oh, by the way, I'm out here with my buddy Nick on the, uh, the sailing kayak. I kind of want one of these. What do you guys think? Should I get one? Yeah, so I don't normally like to mix up the videos like this where I mix two days into one video. It's kind of an awkward thing, but I feel like I, I hyped up the big herring and then didn't really get to use it, at least not in the prime time. So I felt like it wasn't right to post that video without at least giving it a fair try. So. I made it super simple today, just brought one rod. And I only plan to, well, I only brought a few of them. So I only have, I think I have four of the big frozen herring. So as long as those last, we'll use them. And then after that, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, so that's the plan for now. We're just paddling out. Got to set everything up. We'll see you guys out on the, the Halley grounds. My big herring. Just drop it down and see what happens. Uh, all right, that's it. We're trolling. So while we're trolling out here, I feel like the bites are going to be few and far between. So let's just start up this debate right now. So what do you guys think? I think when you're using bigger baits, you have a better chance at hooking a big fish. Now, a lot of people think well, actually, I agree with this. There's a lot of people think that the big fish, they also eat small fish, small baits. So you have a chance to catch a big one even when you're using small fish, which I believe in that as well. But I also think even if it's just the slightest bit, I think your chances increase if you're using bigger baits. And here's why I think that. So one, obviously, you're weeding out some of the smaller fish. So for example, if you're using herring, Thought maybe I had a bite there, but I think it would just hit the bottom. Anyway, so for example, if you're using herring, let's say you're using a smaller herring. With a smaller herring, you're gonna get more fish. That, I don't think that's a question. Um, and when you get the smaller fish, it just is more time that you're out of the water. You know, say you hook a small one, all that time that it takes to bring it in, release it, rebate, and get back down. Maybe you trolled right over a big halibut and you just missed your chance. So that's one thing. And then also, I think if it's a big fish, oftentimes I think they are not willing to go through a lot of effort to go eat a small bait. So whether it's link cod, halibut, salmon, you know, whatever it is, I think it's all the same. So like, for example, maybe there's this big 45 inch halibut sitting down there. And for it to swim and go chase a little herring, it's gonna take a lot of energy to go get up off the bottom, get that tail moving, get that whole body moving. And so if it's gonna expend all that energy, 
it might not want to do that for just this tiny little bait. It might not be worth it. All the energy that they're wasting is going to be more than what, it's worth, what they're gaining when they eat that herring. So I think that's one factor. So if you have a bigger herring, then they say, oh, okay, this might actually be worth it. All that energy that they're expending to go get that herring, they're actually gonna get it back when they eat that bigger meal. So I think about it like for humans, like for me, if I'm sitting on the couch and there's a Cheerio sitting on the counter, I'm probably not gonna get up off the couch to go eat that Cheerio. It's just not worth it. You know, if it was like a little, you know, like a dog, something a lot smaller, they'll easily get off the couch to go get a treat off the counter. But for me, it's not worth it. But if there was this big juicy steak on the on the counter and I was hungry, then yes, I, in that case, I probably would get up off the couch to go eat that steak. So that's kind of how I think about it. I don't know if it all correlates with fish the same way that I think about it with humans, but that's just what I think. And if I look back at some of the big fish that I've caught in the past, especially ling cod, but also halibut and stuff like that, a lot of those were on big baits and I don't always use big baits, so it could have been that, um, you know, maybe it was just having my chance, but it seems like just from my experience that the bigger baits you use, the better your chances of catching something big. So I don't know, that's just me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. But in the meantime, Nick's already caught a keeper and I haven't even got a bite, which I kind of expected using such a big herring out here. But we're gonna keep at it. We'll see, maybe we'll get one here. And uh, yeah, I think his was just a barely keeper. So that's really not what we're looking for with this big herring. We're looking for a big 40 inch, well, at least 30 plus inch halibut, this big herring. So we're gonna keep trolling it around. We're coming up on one spot where I caught one before. So I'm gonna troll through here, try it for a little bit, and then maybe go back, circle back, and go check out what Nick's doing. He's in his little honey hole over there. So anyways, that's the plan for now. That was definitely a bite. Well, I have to admit, I gave up on the big herring. Well, I didn't give up on the big herring, but I did switch it out for now. I do want to catch, I feel like I got to catch a fish or two. Nick's already caught, I think three, one was a keeper, I think two, maybe a little bit short, but there's definitely fish out here. So I wanted to get one under my belt. So I put on a plug. Yeah, I just put that on like maybe two or three minutes ago. So there's definitely fish here. I'm gonna catch one or two on this plug first and then we'll go back to the herring. There's a fish, there's a fish. Okay, there's the first one of the day. There we go. Finally. Pretty close to keeper, but I think it's a shaker. Give it a quick measure. Ah, maybe keeper, maybe. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I think it's a keeper. I think it's a keeper. If it flops off, then it won't be too bad. Yeah, keeper, 23. All right, we'll put him on the stringer. All right, there's first fish of the day and it's a keeper, 23 inches on the plug. Um, pull my line back down. Uh, I, sorry guys, I'm so bad at this. I really wanted to catch one on the big herring, but I can't help myself when there's fish out here. I just want to catch them. So I put the, the plug on and it did the trick. 23 incher, put her on the stringer and uh, see if we can get another one. Oh, I was taking a pee. Fish is on. While I was going to the bathroom, I don't know why, but that seems to happen quite often. I thought that was gonna happen. I was literally like, oh, I think I'm gonna catch one while I do this. And then 
Oh, another keeper. Pretty sure that's a keeper. Uh, he choked the king to the dirt gate there. In the boat. Oh yeah. All right, well this one's a little bloody because uh, that hook got him pretty good. But luckily he's a keeper, so we're gonna keep this one as well. Just about 22 and a half, just over keeper size. But uh, yeah, keeper nonetheless. That's number two. So now I feel like I got my two keepers. Now I gotta do my due diligence and put that big herring back on. So we're gonna put that on now. I think he's on there. As you can probably tell, the wind has really picked up in the last maybe 10, 15 minutes or so. Making fishing a little bit tough. We're gonna start making our way back in. At least we've given this herring a shot. All right, well, unfortunately, didn't get any luck with that big herring, but I feel a little bit better now posting this video for two reasons. One, I gave it a fair shot. I, I used it for about an hour or two this morning before switching the jerk bait. Didn't get any. Switched to the jerk bait, got a couple. And that's the other reason why I feel better about this is I actually caught a couple of keepers. So two keepers going home with. I might have to bring it out again. I think the ticket to a big halibut in the bay might be using that big herring. I think we probably just didn't come across one today, which can't expect to come across one like that every day. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. It's a new series I'm gonna bring to the channel. So if you guys have any suggestions, comments, you, know, you have any lures you want me to try? I have some big ones sitting in my tacky cave that I, I want to be busting out for this. But if you guys have any suggestions, I'm open to getting a few more to add to the collection. But yes, new series come to the channel. Big baits for big fish. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.